Hi everybody, I'm Diane Hall with AARP Missouri and I'd like to welcome you to our first Movement for Life class of 2022. This eight week class is part of AARP Missouri's Moving It Fitness Series and is led by Tyler Ferguson. This class is geared toward increasing mobility to help build your ability to participate in other fitness activities as well as everyday tasks. And speaking of other fitness activities, you can find our previous fitness classes on Missouri's YouTube channel. Movement for Life is about a class that is suitable for many levels of fitness, but you know your own limitations, so please, please do not try to go beyond what you know is right for you. Now, if you have any concerns, please check with your doctor before participating in this or any other AARP fitness class. Now, AARP also other live fitness classes like our very popular Forever Fit class, and we have links to our past programs like Bar Roomba, Zumba Light, and Yoga with Tyler that you can participate in from the recordings. You can find the links to current, past, and upcoming programs at aarp.org slash moving it. All of our programming is good and created with 50, 50 plus in mind, but it is for anyone of any age, anywhere. Movement for Life, we hope that Movement for Life is gonna be a great option for anyone who may not be able to, or who may be hesitant to attend a traditional fitness class like a caregiver, or for those who have health reasons or just for the convenience of working out at home. In addition to our online fitness classes, AARP has other resources for caregivers, up-to-date COVID-19 information and technology information on our website at aarp.org slash near you. So let's get started with Movement for Life. Our instructor is Tyler Ferguson. Tyler, let's move. So just a couple of announcements before we get started. If you are able to practice today barefoot with no socks or shoes on, I would love for you to remove your socks and shoes. If you have neuropathy or something that makes you have to wear shoes, I completely understand that. Also, I am going to cue a chair today for those of you that have difficulty get, getting down onto the mat, mat, onto the floor. So having a chair close by can be helpful both for balance and if you'd like to sit down during our floor activity. Most of our activities though will be standing today. So I'd like to invite all of you to come to standing. We're we'll take a moment to feel our feet. So bringing your feet about hips distance apart, notice if your toes face forward or if they have a tendency to flare out. If you can bring your toes forward, facing the direction you're looking, try to do so. It's not mandatory. And then just stand, take your eye gaze away from the screen and just look down to the floor in front of you, removing the uh, sense of sight. And let's tap into the sense of feel. What do you feel in your feet right now? Can you feel your big toe mound, the ball of the foot? Now take a moment to feel your heel and then take a moment to feel the mound under your piggy toe. Thinking of those three spaces, big toe mound, piggy toe mound and heel, how much weight do you have in those spaces? So starting to move your shoulders around, can you adjust so that you're equally feeling pressure in all three of those spaces? So that's the beginning of grounding and feeling our posture. Now let's explore a little bit more, figure out where your shoulders are relative to your hips. Let the shoulders drift in front of the hips and see how that takes the weight more into your toes. Take the shoulders back behind the hips, see how that takes the weight into your heels. And then once again, resolve with the shoulders right above the arches of the feet to get you grounded. Now pretend like you have a big beach ball in between your legs and you're gonna squeeze the beach ball together. Notice my feet didn't move at all when I squeeze the beach ball together. From that activation, notice what muscles turn on. Feel that activation and then lift and lengthen through your spine. I'd like for you to feel like you're taller when you leave class today. That's the goal. I want you to feel taller and longer and bigger. From here, we'll work on our breath. Take an inhale. Slow, fill up, and exhale, let it all go away. Try that again, a nice, calm, slow inhale. Exhale, let it go. Now on your next inhale, 
Can you take an inhale without moving your shoulders and your hips? Just feel your torso expand. And exhale, feel the torso contract. Now let's try a little thing together. Remember when you used to blow on the, uh, your exhale in the car window and write a little design in it? Put your hand up like it's the car window. <sighs> exhale through your mouth like you're fogging up your window. Now I'm going to do that again. Take an inhale. <sighs> exhale. <sighs> Fog the window. This time, take an inhale, but close your mouth and try to fog the window. What I'm trying to get you to feel is your mouth is closed, you're exhaling through your nose, but you're still feeling the air pass along your throat. Inhale, feel the air pass along your throat. Exhale, fog up the window with your lips closed. There's our quick lesson in breath today. So with our grounded feet and our breath, bring your hands across your chest. You're going to take your chin and just draw it down into your chest. Nice and slow. Try not to move any other part of your spine except for your cervical spine or your neck. Today, I'd like for you to move really slow. Eye gaze is down at the floor. Notice what feels stretchy. Pull the shoulders down and away from the ears. Now lift your chin back up so you can see the screen and then continue taking your chin up to the ceiling as much as it's comfortable, opening up the front of your throat, pull the shoulders down away from the ears. Take an inhale here, exhale, draw the chin back down to the chest again. This is lateral, or I'm mean, sorry, this is forward flexion of your cervical spine of your neck. And then again, lift the chin up. You can close the eyes if you want to, if that doesn't mess up your balance. Open your throat, and then one final time, nice and slow. It's about the journey. It's not about arriving there quick right away. Chin draws towards chest. Feel the sensation. You might even feel it down in the shoulder blades. And final time, lift the chin up, open up the front of the throat. And bring your chin right back to neutral so you're looking at me in the screen again. Take your fit hands and make fists. Draw or punch the fist down to the floor. That'll help you take your shoulders away from your ears. And then rotate your chin over a shoulder, nice and slow. Pause when you get over to one shoulder. Feel that slight sensation or stretch. And then bring your eye gaze back to the screen. Keep continuing through, looking over to the other shoulder. You might notice that you can go further or not as far on one side or the other. That's fine. That's normal. Come back to the center. Most of these exercises we're going to do about three times on each side. So we're starting back now in our original side. You never want to go into pain here. Let's come back to the center. You can explore sensation, or maybe even slight discomfort, but never, never pain, avoid pain. And we'll go one more time, coming back through center, take your eye gaze over that original shoulder. And knowing that we're gonna do these exercises three times, you can slow it down. If you really wanna hang out somewhere, come back through center and uh, explore a feeling or a sensation. You can move at your own pace. Let's come back to center. One more exercise for the neck. Still punching the knuckles down. Take your ear. I'm going to do my right ear. This is my right ear. I'm going to draw my right ear down to the shoulder. My uh, knuckles are pushing down and away. Stay right here, right ear to shoulder. Find your left ear lobe or your left jaw and pull your left ear lobe or jaw up to the ceiling. Good. Now make sure you're breathing here. Sometimes we hold our breath when we're thinking. Now, tuck your chin down, bend a little bit. Let's find that on the other side. Left ear to left shoulder, shoulders down and away. Find your right ear lobe or right jaw, pull it up to the ceiling. So feel that relationship or that length on the side of the neck. Take an inhale here. On your exhale, chin down, knees bend and switch. Right ear to right shoulder, left jaw, left ear lobe pulls up and away, shoulders drive down and away, inhale. Exhale, chin down and switch. Left ear down, right ear pulls up, shoulders down and away. Inhale, chin down and switch. Final time. This might be four. I've lost track. 
a little bit quicker, chin down and switch. Lateral flexion of our neck and we'll come back to center. Great work, y'all. We're gonna do one more uh, exercise for our neck. It's called a neck translation. Bring your hands back up to your chest. I'm gonna turn sideways. You're gonna take your chin and you're gonna jut it forward and down. So your ears are gonna travel in front of your shoulders. Now we usually hang out in this position, but it's a good place to start. Now pull the chin up, back and in. And then feel the crown of your head pulling up to the ceiling. So get real long and tall in the back of the neck and pull the chin in and tucked. Like you're gonna make some double chins here. You see how I'm pulling it back and making these double chins? Let's try that a couple more times. Chin goes down and forward, slides, glides forward and down, and then up, back and in. Back of the neck feels long, crown of the head is long. One final time, forward, down, and back up and in, long neck, good. We'll let go of the neck today and just move to the shoulders. Just shrug the shoulders up to the ears and pull them down away from the ears. So I want you to become aware of your uh, shoulders. And even though I'm cueing the shoulders here, see if you can feel your shoulder blades on the back of your body, maybe moving up and down. So typically we hang out with our shoulders up in our ears like this, and we wanna get used to creating space between the ears and the shoulders. With the shoulders down and away, bring your hands up forward and pretend like it's your wrists or uh, you're not overhead here, you're just out and forward. And I want you to pretend like you're holding on to a bar. Pretend like it's a big metal bar and I want you to bend it down so you turn the bar into horseshoes. So I'm gonna do it where you can see my wrist. So I've got this strong bar and I'm gonna bend it down like this. And by doing this and pretending like it's a really uh, strong bar, you might feel your lats turn on. That's what I'm trying to help you feel is your lats. From here, elevate your right shoulder up into your ear and then depress it back down. Go to your left shoulder, elevate up into the ear and back down. Right shoulder elevates. Now pull it back to press it down. Left shoulder is gonna elevate, pull it back, pack it down. This is called chasing shoulders. Right shoulder up, back and down. Left shoulder up, back and down. Right shoulder up, back and down. Left shoulder up, back and down. As you do this, notice if you have softness or a bend at the elbow and you're leaking energy there. Drive through the knuckles, make the arms nice and long and get the movement back into the shoulder blade. And let this exercise breathe you and let it go. That's enough of that exercise. You might feel some heat in your deltoids as you practice that exercise. Let's go to the wrists now. Again, the arms are out in front. You're making knuckles and the wrists are flat. And I want you to pretend like you're holding on to a bar and I want you to take the wrist and bring it down and then take the wrist up. So notice I'm not cueing the knuckles to go down, I'm cueing the wrist to go down and I'm cueing the wrist to go up. Take the arms out nice and long in front of you, wrists go down, pause here, see how far you can take your wrist down and then take the wrist up. And see how far you can take them up and still maintain a grip with your fingers. Two more times, down and up. Wrist goes down and wrist goes up. Now come to neutral. Actually, bring your arms down and shake that out a little bit. Yeah. So again, you might be feeling some heat. And even though we're working mobility of the wrists here, you might feel heat in your deltoids. Bring your arms out again. And see this little bone right here in the wrist? Bring the bones toward one another so the knuckles will go away and bring the bones, the outside bones out in a way so the knuckles turn in. So uh, let's see. So bones, inside bones go toward one another and then outside bones go out. So find that movement in your wrists. The palms of the hand or the back of the hand is staying up towards the sky. 
Good. Keep breathing here and release and let it go. Again, you might feel some heat in the shoulders. Couple exercises for the fingers. Palms facing forward. Make an A-OK -okay for me. So bring your thumb and your index finger together. I'm squatting so you can see me, but you can still stand tall. And then stack your fingers on top. So you have these little circles. Now lift your pinky, fourth, third, second. Sweep your fingers around like you're holding an ice cream cone. So now the backs of your hands are facing the screen. Then unwind your hands and go back into an A-OK. -okay. And then we'll do that. Ice cream cone. Spread the fingers, turn the hands around, A-OK. -okay. Pinky fourth fingers, turn it around to ice cream cone. And back around to A-OK. -okay. And shake it out. OK, that's enough for today. Uh, for arms and fingers, wrists, we'll get more later uh, in the week. Take your hands, cross them right over your chest one more time. Feet or hips distance apart. Stand nice and tall. Let yourself press into the front of your hips. Rather than having the hips bent, let yourself press into your hips forward. And then figure out where your ribs are related to your pelvis. Feel this distance of ribs and pelvis. And I want you to pull your left rib up and away from your left pelvis as you tilt over to the right. So the idea is that you're not feeling so crunchy on one side, but you're feeling super, super long on one side. And then bring yourself back up to the middle. Now you're gonna go the other direction. So for me, my right rib, I'm gonna pull it up and away from my pelvis, lengthening through my spine as I come over to the side. And then if you're holding your breath, be sure to breathe. Sometimes it's hard to do. And then notice where your head is. Is your head hanging or is it equally between your shoulders? Come back up to center. Let's try that again. I'm gonna go over to my right side, lift and lengthen to the left, come over to the right. This is lateral flexion of the spine and you don't wanna rotate. You wanna keep the chest open to the computer screen. Breathe here, inhale, exhale, back up to center. Lift and lengthen, right side, inhale. Come over to the left side. Stay for a breath, try to breathe into that rib cage and exhale back up to center. Now you can keep your hands right here or for more sensation, reach your hands up overhead and grab your elbows, lift and lengthen, pull your left elbow up and over. Now, if you have a shoulder injury and you can't reach your arms up overhead, this probably isn't an exercise for you. And you'll notice there's a little bit more work in the core to come over. Inhale, back up to center. Now my left hand is gonna pull my right elbow, pull, lift and lengthen. And over to the sides. Keep breathing, my friends. Inhale yourself back up to center. Release the arms. Bring your hands together. You're going to interlace your fingers and then take these uh, index fingers and point and then cross your thumbs right here. From here, push your fingers forward, straightening out at the elbows and round your back ribs to the wall behind you. And your eye gaze should be right at your thumbs. You can bend your knees a little bit here. And then just pause and breathe and soften in this shape and allow the sensation of the shoulder blades opening up and the arms lengthening and reaching in front of you. Allow that to just sink into your tissues. Breathe. And then we're going to do the opposite motion from here. Separate the hands. As the hands separate, keep the arms straight. Pull your heart forward and lengthen through the chest and the arms. You can stand up tall here. You can squeeze your glutes a little bit here. Take a breath, inhale. Exhale, bring your hands back together and shoot and round forward. So notice what's going on in the back body. The back is rounding and the heart, the front body is caving in as the back rounds. Your shoulder blades are separating from one another. Now notice when we go into chest expansion, open up the hands, feel how the shoulder blades move toward one another. And as you visit your end uh, shape here, pretend like there's a pencil between your shoulder blades and your back. Can you squeeze that pencil? No pain, but can you hold onto that pencil? You can look up a little bit where the ceiling and the wall meet. Last time, hands come together. 
That's the exercise. Shoot and round, open the shoulder blades, open the back, hollow out the front body or the core or the heart. Breathe, open up, chest expansion, lift your heart, draw your navel to your spine here and turn on your glutes a little bit. Look up and then bring your hands back to center. Okay, awesome. That was the work we did in our thoracic spine or the area of our spine that's associated with our rib cage. Let's get into our lumbar, our lower spine. Place your hands on your hips and you can do this investigation. This is your homework, but you're gonna pull up your shirt and notice where your waistband is. So sometimes if you look at your waistband, it can be tilted forward a lot and you kind of hang out in life this way, pouring water out of the front of your bucket if your pelvis was a bucket. And then some people hang out here in life and they pour water out of the back of their bucket. So I want you guys to try to get your buckets straight. Don't pour water out of the front or water out of the back. Try to get straight and neutral in your waist there. And one of the ways we can get there, as I talked about, if we're pouring water out of the front, we have this crease in the hips here, see that? So push down through the heels to get the hips to come forward. And from this neutral place, you're gonna, we're gonna learn a hip hinge. Take your fingertips and press them right into the front of your hips and pull the hips back behind the heels. So I just contradicted myself a little bit, but I'm going into a hip hinge. Keep pulling the hips back behind the heels as the trunk gets closer to the floor. But notice I'm not rounding in my back or spine at all. This is a pretty tough skill to learn. Now to come up, push down through the heels and bring the hips back forward. Once again, fingertips go into the hips, press the sits bones or the glutes back behind the heels. And this is your hinge. Now notice, we'll hang out here for a second. You can rest your hands on your thighs. You'll notice you're getting a hamstring stretch, right? So you can bend the knees a little bit to go deeper or to help facilitate more stretch and less nervous system response to that hamstring stretch. And then to come out of it, drive through the heels, come back up to standing. Now from full standing, place your hands on your hips. You're gonna pull your heels, or I'm sorry, pull your hips back behind your heels a little bit. But if you're on a mat, send them off the edge of the mat. So you're sending your hips back to the back corner of the room, slightly to the side and slightly to the back. So this is called a hip root. You might be feeling some stretch in your outside hip capsule, a little hamstring stretch. Drive the heels down to stand up tall. Stand up really tall with me. Reach long through the crown of the head and turn on your glutes a little bit. Squeeze the glutes, turn them on. Inhale here. Exhale, pull your hips back behind your heel and then send them off the side of the mat a little bit and back towards the back corner of the other room. So let me just show you what this shape I look like from the side. So I'm in a hip hinge here. It's just that my hips aren't right behind me. They're off to the side a little bit. Drive your hips down to come up to standing. Stand tall. Chin goes in to lengthen through the back of the neck. Squeeze the glutes, press through the hips two more times. Hip root down to one side. This will be my left side, 45 degree angle. Little bend in the knee here. Inhale, exhale, stand up tall. Chin is in, crown of the head is long. Hip hinge back to the other side. So notice my back is flat in a hip hinge. I'm not rounded in the back. So remember when we did that shoot and round, this is pulling my chest forward. Stand up, squeeze glutes, chin in, lift and lengthen. Last time, hip root left. Stand up tall and hip root right. And stand up tall. All right, yogis, good job with the hips. It's time for me to switch to my toe cam, but I have lost my mouse. And I still don't have my mouse. So, oh, so bummed I can't set up my toe cam from you, but we, we can still do some toe uh, exercises. So come back to standing and then see if you can lift all 10 toes off of the mat. And what I like to do is I like to put my hands right out in front of me and I 
when I do it with my hands, my toes follow. And then place your toes back down on the mat. Stand up nice and tall. Now notice this time, when you lift all 10 toes, do you lose your balance? Do you start to move around? Place your toes back down on the mat. Now, remember how we talked about putting your weight into the arch of your foot? So if you lift your toes and you come off balance, you know that your weight is hanging out in your toes. So shift your weight a little bit. Let's see if we can make that adjustment. Lift all 10 toes. Keep them lifted off the mat. Now look down and see if you can spread the toes and see space between the toes. Keep them lifted. Now, can you tap just your big toe down and up? I'm using my thumbs to help me find that place in my brain. And if you can't do this, don't worry about it. This takes months for some people or years. This could be homework too, or these toe taps when you're brushing your teeth. And then keep your toes spread, place them all down. And just stand and be for a minute, maybe wiggle out your legs. So waking up the feet, we have 26 bones, 33 joints in our foot, feet, and over 100 muscles. But when do you work out your feet, right? So this is our foot workout today. Lift the toes, spread them and separate them. Look down, make sure they're spread as wide as you can. And if you can't spread them, go ahead. If you're able, stick your fingers in between your toes and see if you can spread them out. Grab onto them, work them. That's okay. All of that's okay. If those of you, for those of you that have them spread, lift and spread, try to tap your piggy toe down and up. Piggy toe down and up. Piggy toe down and up. And as you're doing this work, you might feel the top of your foot spread out, or you might even feel some muscles turn on in your feet that you haven't felt before. Release the toes and put them down. We're going to do one more exercise with our toes here. So lift the toes, spread them up or spread them nice and wide. Now place the toes down on the ground and still try to keep them spread if possible. Look down and see if you have any space in between any toes. Thumbs up if you do. If you don't, just take your inventory and you can work toward it. Now press the toe pads down. Don't curl the toes under. Press the tap, toe pads down and draw the pads of the toes back toward the heel. You might feel your arch lift. Yeah. And if you're not feeling it, maybe lift the toes and spread, place the pads down, try it again, pull the pads back towards the heel. If you can feel the arch lift, can you feel a connection, bringing your inner thighs in, squeezing that beach ball, and then drawing navel to the spine. So feel the relationship between the toes and the fascia all into the core. Great work, yogis, release your toes and let it go. Okay. So now we're gonna do a little bit of core work. And for everyone, I'm hoping there's something in your room that you can step up your foot and put it on. So I just have a chair here for me. Um, if you don't have something this tall, it's fine. A yoga block, a book, a coffee table, just something. Uh, and if you don't, you can hold on for balance, but it's best if you can step up today. And if you don't have the equipment, that's okay. We had to get started somehow. So. Maybe holding on for balance. Go ahead and put one foot on your elevated area. Good. And then, <clears throat> how do I want to do this for you guys? Do it like this. And then the opposite hand, I'm going to place it behind my head like this. And I'm going to think about my shoulder and my belly. I'm not going to think about my elbow or my neck. I'm going to keep my neck and elbow. Still, I'm going to pull my shoulder and my belly toward my knee and hinge a little bit and then come back up. So it's just a slight activation. You don't want to pull on your head or change how your neck feels. So I'm just rotating and doing a little crunch. I can see there are people talking on the chat. This video is going to be recorded. So if you didn't have this equipment today, just follow along without your knee up as best you can, and then you can re-watch this video. So we're just doing these little tiny pulses. What I want you to feel is initiating the uh, movement from the middle of your body, not pulling with your extremities. And bring your foot down, and then we'll switch sides. Opposite foot goes up. 
So I have my left foot up. So the long side of my body go, that arm goes behind my head. I can hold on for balance. And then I'm just gonna do this little rotation, this little crunch. Again, if you can cultivate the skill of initiating your movement from closer to your core and allow the head and the elbow to follow rather than lead, that's a pretty cool skill that you can cultivate. We're just looking for about three or five little tiny rotations. Notice I'm not touching my elbow to my knee. That's not important. It's just finding that activation, finding that rotation. And then come down. I have another one for you where we're gonna step the leg up. Again, if you don't have a thing to elevate at home, just follow along and you can watch the video later. So I'm gonna go back to the right leg, step it up. Bring your hands out in front of you, like you're going to patty cake. And then with both hands, just rotate as far as you can rotate. You're rotating in the direction of the leg that's lifted. And then come back to center. I'm going to show you this from different angles. Back to the center, rotate. And come back to center. Now stay here with me. Before we rotate again, this leg that's down, I want you to push through the heel and turn on the glute on that leg. Really hug the globe of the glute to the bones. Hug your quad to the bones and get tall out of that leg. Keep hugging and squeezing, thinking about that beach ball on the inside. Now try your rotation one more time and come back to center. Right leg comes off the chair. Left leg goes up on the chair. Same exercise, hands come together. Now, next time you could hold on to a little three or five pound weight or a can of soup, whatever you want. Today, we'll just put hands together. Let's try to firm that standing leg glute right away. Squeeze the muscle to the bone and find your rotations. You're rotating in the direction of the knee that's forward, the knee that's elevated. Three, two. So my hips, are facing the same way the whole time. And I'm trying to use my oblique muscles and rotate up above the hips, trying to find that rotation above the hips. With all exercises, go nice and slow. Last exercise, I'm just gonna tell you if you have some balance issues, make some smart choices. Either have a lower thing to step on uh, in other words, don't bring your uh, foot up as high or just watch along and make sure you're in a safe environment to do this. So now we're going to reach the arms up overhead. So you can't see my arms, but my arms are reaching overhead. So I'm assuming people without shoulder inju injuries can do this one. And then again, you can pretend like you're squeezing a block up overhead and then tap your right leg. Tap, draw navel to spine. Right leg goes down, left leg up, tap, draw navel to spine and down. Right leg up, tap and down. Left leg up, tap and down, navel to spine. Push the palms toward one another. They don't have to touch, but you have to pretend like there's something between the palms that you're pushing together like a yoga block. And then each time you lift the leg, draw the navel into the spine. Last time and arms go down. All right, that's our standing core workout for today. We are gonna now move down to the mat, um, but you can stay in a chair for this mat work. Actually, you can either sit in a chair and put your hands on a coffee table, or you can stand at your kitchen table and do this, all right? Or stand at a high table and do this, or stand at a low table, just depending on your mobility. And then for those of you that can make it down on the floor, we're just gonna come down to quadruped. Here's how I like to get to quadruped for those hips. Remember how we pulled the hips back behind the heels? Send your hands forward, pull the hips back behind the heels as slow as you can. And then you can also bend the knees. And what you're trying to do is bring your chest to your thighs while also dropping your seat. And then hopefully that brings your hands closer to the floor, at which point you can now put your weight into your hands and come to the floor. So maybe that works for some of you. For others, we're gonna do our shin box work and we're gonna to get to there, hopefully in some time.
Now, if you're down on the floor, what I'd like for you to do, I wish I had my toe cam, is work on your wrists. So, da, 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 I want to get where you can see me. Yeah. So you're spreading your fingers wide, just like we did with our toes and putting weight in the wrists. So that's what I'm saying. If you can't get down on the ground, just spread your fingers wide on a coffee table or the table and just put weight into your hands. For us on our hands and knees, spread the fingers wide. Knees are right under hips, okay? They're not back behind our hips. They're right under the hips. Wrist under shoulders, spread the fingers wide and then start to make some circles. So if you look at the screen really quick, notice in my circle, my shoulders go in front of my wrist over my fingertips and then I circle back and then my hips come back behind my knees. And what that allows me to do is determine how much pressure I'm putting into my wrists, how much pressure I can tolerate. You can do this standing at your table too. We're just getting a little bit more wrist mobility. Take your circles in the other direction. Now, this is super painful for you. You make smaller circles, right? You put less weight on the wrists. So you have the ability to dictate how much weight you put in your wrists here. And then after you've circled around, you can do this at the table or the floor, take one hand, turn the thumb outside, place the fingers back down. Now the fingers are pointed towards the knees. For some of you, just that's enough. Now, most of your weight can be in your balancing hand, so you don't have a lot of weight in the hand that you're uh, flipped in the other direction. So for some of you, maybe it's that's enough. For others, spread the fingers, press the fingertips down, and then bend the elbow back toward the body. As you peel the palm up nice and slow, Feel that delicious stretch in the fingers. If there's too much weight in the hand, just bring the hips back behind the knees a little bit and then send the hips forward, peel the hand down. I'm gonna get up, but I want you to stay on your hands and knees and do it again. If you're standing at the table, it'll just look like this. Just put your palm on the table and then bend the elbow back, all right? And then after you get three in your right hand, switch around to your left hand. If you're not done, go ahead and take your time and finish. Otherwise, I'm going to switch around to the other hand. So you only put as much weight as you can tolerate. Right now, I have most of the weight in my knees and my right hand. There's barely any weight in my left hand, which allows me to spread the fingers. Now, when my hips go back toward my heels, I'm sorry, when my hips go forward, that's more weight into my left hand. I'm going to bend the elbow and peel. The palm up, fingers stay down until I peel back more and peel the fingers up. Now, as you're doing this work, breathe. It's very easy to focus and get super into your work and forget to breathe. So try to breathe into the work or breathe with the work. And another thing to note, I may have forgotten to mention at the beginning, nothing we do today should put you in pain. You should never feel pain. Um, and if you can't breathe, that's an indication that whatever you're doing is, is too much on the nervous system. All right, we're going to come off the wrist and we're going to move into cat cow here. So we've already done this standing. And if your hands are on a table, just to follow the best you can from a table. So press the back ribs away towards the ceiling. Now draw the chin into the chest and draw your belly button up into your spine, up to the bottom of your ribs. So this is like a Halloween cat with big rounded back. Take an inhale here. And then on an exhale, let your belly drop, let your back round, lift your eye gaze forward, draw your shoulders back and let yourself create like a little tail, a little sassy tail. Take an inhale here. Exhale, go back into your cat pose. This time with your hands on the mat, push the hands away. Like they're not gonna move anywhere, but actively like you're trying to push the hands more toward the front of your mat or the front of your space. Inhale. And then on an exhale, move into cow pose, slide your hands toward your knees. Now they're not moving, but actively, energetically pull your wrist towards your knees 
as you come into this cow shape. And then come to neutral. Our last series is called shin box. I'm gonna set you up on the ground first and then show you how to do it on the chair. On the ground for your shin box, you're gonna sit with your feet wider than your hips. Now this isn't very ladylike. And if my mother was on the Zoom meeting, she wouldn't be happy right now, but this is the setup for it. So for some of you just getting down on the floor in that shape, that's gonna be your challenge. You can place your hands behind you as much as you need to, is to be comfortable in this position, but you don't, wanna, you don't wanna bring the shoulders into the ears. You wanna drive the shoulders away from the ears and lift in the chest while you're in this position. Now, if you're in a chair, you're just gonna sit to the front of your chair, the very, very front of your chair and put your hands back behind you in the chair, okay? We'll talk about it after class if you can't find that. Now, left leg still does not move, does not move. Right knee, let it fall towards the midline and then bring it back up. This is called feathering. And then get, you can walk your feet further apart, let the right knee fall. Now your knee probably won't go as far as mine because I've been doing these for a while. So you don't wanna move both legs. You wanna keep your pelvis still so you feel yourself in your sit bones and then feather back up. Now notice as my knee goes to the middle, I can roll onto the inside of my foot and bring it into the middle as much as that feels good. Both of my sits bones are still on the ground. Keep breathing through this, pause. Now the leg that you mobilize, still keep it still and make your opposite leg mobile. Bring it toward the midline. Oh, and again, you might notice you're different on one side of the body versus the other. So this hip was like, yeah, that's it. That's all I'm giving you today. We're not going anywhere else. Okay, that's fine. Meet yourself exactly where you are. And if you've never done shin box before, you're just taking an inventory. You're just figuring out what, what shape do I sit in? How do I make myself comfortable doing this? What does it mean to take my shoulders out of my ears when I do this. For others, you're like, okay, I see where my hip wants to go today. Now we're gonna add on to this exercise in the next coming weeks, but I just want you to get the start of your shin box. This can also be homework for you. Uh, doing this hip mobility work can take you a long way in a short amount of time, as long as there's no injuries or uh, issues. Okay, it is time to finish class. This is what I'd like for you to do though. Just take a moment, whether you're on the floor or in your chair, have a seat, just have a place where you can relax. If you wanna lie down on the floor, that's great. If you wanna just sit up and lean against the wall, that's fine. And I want you to let go of what we did today. And by let go, I do mean emotionally or uh, mentally is what I mean, but also physically, I want you to try to turn everything off. So the more supported you are either in a chair or the floor, the easier it's going to be to let go. And then maybe by closing your eyes, you can return on the sensation of feel. And you might notice that the floor or the chair, the points of your body touching that area are warming up. And the chair or the floor is receiving you a little bit more and more as you let go. If you're on the ground, can you let your legs roll open so that the toes, the piggy toes are rolling towards the ground? And then allow yourself to soften in your jaw. We tend to hold tension in our jaw, separate the teeth, Pull the tongue away from the roof of your mouth. And then also in the forehead where we think and we scrunch up, just try to soften there. Soften the shoulders away from the ear, down to the mat. Soften around the belly. And just do a little scan along your body. Feel your arms all the way down to the fingertips. 
feel your waist and move down your legs with your awareness. And notice if you're holding on to any shape that's unnecessary and if you can just let go. And from that place of letting go, let go of the way you breathe and just be for a moment. And then allow yourself to enter into the rest of your day by taking one more breath here. Open up your eyes, start to move your fingers and your wrists and your toes. If you're seated in a chair, you can do this. If you're laying on the ground, you can do this. And then to make your way off the ground, bend your knees so the bottom of the feet are on the ground and the knees are up in the air. And then let both knees fall over to one side, rolling onto your side. And then one arm will be on top. Use that hand of the top arm to slowly press yourself back up to a seat. <clears throat> it has been a pleasure and an honor to get to share this practice with you today. There's a large number of people that were in class today. So thank you for uh, to Diane for managing everything. And thanks to all of you who were new with the Zoom format and you had the courage to come here and try it. That's, that's an awesome, uh, accomplishment on your part. Thanks for joining me today. I hope to see you next week. Bye.